The next thing I want to talk about is polynomials and matrices. So basically, given a polynomial P of T, I can always compute or define something called P of A, where um, all the T's are replaced by, by A, and uh, the constant term is uh, replaced by that constant term times the identity matrix. And uh, we have already seen that there are, there's a strong connection between polynomials and matrices. For example, the Kelly hamilton theorem, which says that uh, uh, for every matrix A, uh, there is a characteristic polynomial which annihilates A, that is PA of A equals zero. Uh, but there could be polynomials of lower degrees, uh, degree n minus one or n minus two, etc., that also annihilates A. So one related question you can ask is, what is the minimal degree polynomial that annihilates A? Now, uh, for any polynomial that annihilates A, you can always scale that polynomial and make the leading coefficient, that is the coefficient of the highest power of that polynomial or in that polynomial, equal to one. And such polynomials are called monic polynomials. And of course, note that uh, since the, the highest power has a leading coefficient equal to one, um, a monic polynomial cannot be an identically zero polynomial. Of course, if you take the identically zero polynomial, that annihilates any matrix, but that is not saying much. So we're not interested in that polynomial. So we want to find the lowest degree monic polynomial that annihilates A. So that is given by the following theorem. So given a matrix A in C to the N cross N, uh, there exists a unique monic polynomial Q A of A of degree at most n that annihilates A. That is Q A of A is equal to zero. So for given such a polynomial, if P of T uh, is any polynomial that um, such that P of A equals zero, then Q A of T divides P of T. Okay. So that is the theorem. So let's see how to show this. So P of uh, A is a polynomial that annihilates A. And uh, so suppose P A of T is a, so uh, the characteristic polynomial P A of T is a, it annihilates A. This is the Kelly Hamilton theorem. and it has a degree equal to n, okay? So that means that uh, there, there exists um, a minimum integer m such that um, there is a uh, monic polynomial Q of T with degree M and Q of A equals zero. Okay, so we've already found something that is of degree N. So the minimum degree polynomial that annihilates A, call that Q of Q of T, and this has some uh, some some degree M, which is going to be at most equal to N, and it satisfies the uh, the condition that it annihilates A, that is Q of A equals zero. So um, so that's basically degree of Q of T is less than or equal to the degree of P of T. 
Now, uh, P A of T. Now, suppose um, P of T. Sir. Sir. Yes. Sir, here, here P T and P A of T are different. Different. So annihilate A and say Q of T. Now Q of T we've defined it to be the minimal polynomial of minimal degree. That annihilates A. then certainly it must be true that the degree of P of T is greater than or equal to the degree of Q of T because Q of T is after all the polynomial of minimal degree that annihilates A. So now what we'll do is we'll divide uh, P of T by Q of T. Okay, you can divide polynomials. You, 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 you have seen this in your high school. There's an algorithm called Euclid's algorithm you can use. And what this does when you do this division is that you can you will end up with P of T is equal to some H of T times Q of T plus some R of T. So this is the quotient polynomial. This is the remainder polynomial. And uh, by, I mean, since this is the remainder polynomial, the only property it needs to satisfy is that the degree of uh, R of T is strictly less than the degree of Q of T. Okay? Because if there is some extra power left in R of T, then you could take out one more factor into this H of T. Okay, so now since P of A is another polynomial that annihilates uh, A, so P of A equals zero, and this is equal to H of A times Q of A, plus R of A and uh, Q of A is already equal to zero. And so that implies <coughs> R of A equals zero. So what we've done is we've now found a polynomial of smaller degree than Q of T that annihilates A. So This is a contradiction. Because we started out by assuming that A, the Q of T is the minimal degree polynomial that annihilates A. So that means that R of T must be, um, must be the all zero, or the, it's just the zero polynomial. In other words, it means that um, Q of T divides P of T if P of T is any other polynomial that annihilates A. Now, if there are two monic polynomials of the smallest degree, we have to show uniqueness. So if there are two monic polynomials of smallest degree that uh, annihilate A, Uh, then uh, this same argument here implies that both 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 these polynomials divide each other. Okay, and if they divide each other, then um, then it means that. They, it means that they have the same degree and it also means that um, one is a scalar multiple of the other.
but they're monic. That means that their leading leading coefficient is equal to one. So um, so if they're if they're just a scalar multiple of each other and the leading coefficient equals one in both of them, then uh, the scale factor is just equal to one. And uh, uh, so they're identical. So this establishes the uniqueness. So um, basically, the so that that's basically the definition. So the unique monic polynomial. Um, through a of t of minimum degree that annihilates a is called the minimal polynomial. of a so basically these minimal polynomials have lots of very nice properties um, i'll just talk about one here but uh, uh, but i think you can look at the textbook for many more interesting results around minimal polynomials so here's a corollary um, similar matrices have the same minimal polynomial. So this is uh, very easy to see. So A and B are uh, N cross N matrices and A is similar to B. That means I can write um, A as uh, S B S inverse for some invertible using some invertible matrix S. So if I take Q, if I compute Q B of A, so Q B of A, Q B of T is the minimal polynomial of the matrix B, and if I compute Q B of A, that is equal to Q B of S B S inverse, and this is equal to S Q B of B times S inverse and uh, QB of B equals zero because QB is the polynomial of minimal degree uh, that annihilates B. So this is equal to zero. So that implies that, uh, so QB of A is uh, zero. That means the degree of QB of T is greater than or equal to the degree of Q A of T because Q A of T is the polynomial of minimal degree that annihilates A and Q B of T is some other polynomial that all annihilates A. So the degree of Q B of T must be at least equal to the degree of Q A of T. Um, now, uh, there, there's nothing special about A or B in this argument. So you can simply repeat the argument exchanging A and B and similarly say that um, degree of Q A of T is greater than or equal to the degree of Q B of T. And uh, so, so that means that uh, they have the same degree. And the, uh, adding the fact that they're monic implies that they have the same polynomial. It's the same argument we made about uniqueness at the previous uh, uh, proof. So here is actually one more corollary that says that for every A in C to the N cross N, um, Q A of T divides P A of T. Okay, P A of T is the characteristic polynomial, this uh, of A and Q A of T is the minimal polynomial of T. Moreover, um, Q A of lambda 
if and only if lambda is an eigenvalue of A. So that means that every root of so every root of P A of T equals zero is also a root of Q A of T equals zero. So there aren't any additional zeros in P A of T which are not roots of Q A of T equals zero. So since P A of uh, a equals zero. Uh, there exists a polynomial h of t such that um, p a of t equals h of t times q a of t. This is just because of the previous theorem we saw. If uh, p a of t is some other polynomial that divide uh, that annihilates a then q a of t divides that other polynomial which is p a of t in this case okay so um, uh, so that means that um, so because it's like this every root of q a of t equals 0 is a root of P A of T equals zero. Obviously, right? Because if if I say Q A of lambda is equal to zero, then I have that P A of lambda is H of lambda times Q A of lambda, and Q A of lambda equals zero, so P A of lambda is also equal to zero. Um, so that means that every um, every root of Q A of T equals zero is an eigenvalue of A. is an eigenvalue of A because P A of that root is equal to zero. Um, now, then, um, uh, in, and if, if X not equal to zero is an associated eigenvector then um, from a x equals lambda x we have that uh, uh, zero which is equal to q a of a times x is also equal to q a of lambda times x because a x equals lambda yeah so what i was saying that uh, and if x not equal to zero is an associated eigenvector, uh, x equals lambda x implies that q a of a times x, which is equal to q a of lambda times x, um, uh, is equal to q a of lambda times x. And since x is not equal to zero, this must mean that for q a of lambda times x to be equal to zero, we must have that q a of lambda equals zero. Okay, and therefore uh, it is true that um, uh, 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 if if lambda is an eigenvalue of a, then QA of lambda equals zero, which proves the result. Um, and so basically, the what this implies is that if P, P of t, if I write it out in its uh, product form, I equal to one to T minus lambda i power say si where 1 less than or equal to si less than or equal to n and s1 plus s2 plus etc plus uh, sm equals n then uh, with lambda i being distinct then uh, q a of t must have the okay so that is to say that for every factor that appears in the characteristic polynomial uh, the product form of the characteristic polynomial 
there should be a corresponding uh, factor in the minimal polynomial. And this Ri here is at least equal to 1, but it need not equal Si all the way. So the summation of Ri could potentially be less than n, uh, but uh, you will have some factors like this. So this is one way to even to, uh, to actually search for minimal polynomials. That is, uh, you, you take um, uh, Ri equal to 1, 2, all the way up to Si for each i, and then see what is the minimal degree polynomial that you can generate out of this, which uh, for which QA of A equals zero. Uh, of course, for very large dimensional systems, this is uh, uh, difficult to compute. And also note that if SI equals one for that is any, uh, if there's a particular eigenvalue that is appearing with multiplicity one, then that same factor will certainly appear in the minimal polynomial. If only in the case where um, there is a factor here that appears with power 2 or more, that it's possible for Ri to be less than Si. <clears throat> okay, so here's something Sir? for you to think about. I dare not ask you because you won't answer. Sir? So the first question is, yeah. Yeah, only if Ri is equals to 1, we will get the minimal polynomial, right? For no, Ri. No. It may not be, so, so let me... Uh, no, it's not true. So it's possible that you do have to take um, higher powers of uh, Ri in order to annul annihilate A. So for example, let me see if I can give you a very quick example. Um, huh. So if we take our favorite uh, defective matrix 0, 1, 0, 0, then if I take the polynomial, so both its eigenvalues are equal to 0, and its characteristic polynomial, so this is A, P A of T is equal to T square, right? Now, um, basically you can see that in this case, if I take, um, uh, so my choices for Q of Q A of T are T and T square, right? Because I, I have to get that here and get this factor. For each eigenvalue, I must get a factor here, and the powers available to me are only one or two. Obviously, if I take QA of T equals T and I compute QA of A, I will not get the zero matrix. I'll, I'll get the matrix A. But if I take QA of T equal to T squared, then uh, QA of A equals zero. So in this case, QA of T equals PA of T. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So it's possible that you do have to take higher powers here. It's not always true that you will have to take Ri equals 1. So here are some questions. So question 1 is, what is the polynomial? What is the minimal polynomial of the identity matrix? What is the minimal polynomial of the all ones matrix? Okay. So you can think about these very easy questions, but uh, I'll let you think about them. <clears throat> 